Are you using the Unity Navigation System, and do you want moving platforms in your game? Have you checked out the Unity NavMesh Components Frequently Asked Questions and seen that is explicitly not supported? In this video, we're going to take a look at two different ways that you can use the Unity NavMesh Components in your game with moving platforms, as well as the limitations and drawbacks of those two solutions. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today's part 28 of the AI series, where we're going to talk about implementing moving platforms, which is officially not supported according to Unity's own documentation using the NavMesh components. The first way we're going to look at, the user cannot control the NavMesh agent while it's on the platform. That's okay for some particular use cases, such as maybe you have a boat that's a moving platform that goes back and forth, and the player can't really move while they're on the boat anyway. The second one, and the one you're probably more interested in, is where the player can control their NavMesh agent while it's on a moving platform. This one has some serious limitations we're going to talk about later in the video, but it can work and you can work around those limitations. Also talk about how you can structure your scene so you do not need to update the NavMesh at all at runtime. And before we go any further, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's supporting me on Patreon right now. I really appreciate it. Every bit helps the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. And that means more people are making their game development dream become a reality. If you want to help me in that cause, you can show your support on Patreon, patreon.com slash LomAcademy. You can get your name up on the screen. You can get a voice shout out starting at the silver tier and some other cool perks. Special shout outs to Raphael for being the silver supporter. I'm so grateful for that next level support. Thank you. In this scene, we're not doing anything crazy. We only have a single agent type called player, radius of 0.25, height of 2, slope height of 0.4, and a max slope of 45 degrees so we can climb up this ramp. In the areas, the entire level is walkable. And if I select the player, you can see it has a nav mesh agent. It has all default values except the height is two, so it matches the cylinder height. I've attached a kinematic rigid body component and an agent link mover, so it can use agent links and have it move at a normal speed across those nav mesh links. The agent link mover is a slightly enhanced version of what Unity will give you in the nav mesh components repos in the examples folder. Now, if we take a look at the hierarchy, you can see that we have a floor that has a nav mesh surface attached. It has two ramps, underneath it and then four nav mesh links. The setup is really important because our two moving platforms are not a child of the floor. So whenever we bake the nav mesh using collect objects children on the floor, those moving platforms are not included in the bake. Those two moving platforms have their own nav mesh surface attached that also have collect objects children. So whenever we bake those, they get their own nav mesh data created. And I'm going to talk more about the importance of this scene setup a little bit later in the video about why we have the nav mesh links set up under the floor and not on the moving platform, which is where you might think that they should go. As long as we're talking about the moving platforms, let's take a look at that. We'll see that there are both a mesh collider, which comes from the Pro Builder object. Whenever we create a Pro Builder cube, it comes with a mesh collider, but it also has a box collider that's marked as is trigger. And if you take a really close look at this box collider, you'll see it's a little bit smaller than the actual floor platform and sticks up a little bit from the floor. And this is because we're going to want whenever the nav mesh agent gets on the platform, we're going to use the on trigger enter event to control the agent sum whenever they get on this platform. That's why we need the kinematic rigid body on the nav mesh agent and why we need a trigger collider that's inside of this platform. And we want it a little bit smaller than the platform so the agent can get onto the platform before we start controlling it. If we go to the assets scripts, you'll see there's two scripts already here, that agent link mover I was talking about a second ago. We're not gonna look at that one. And also the player input, which is the exact same as we've done multiple times before. I'm not gonna go over that one in this video either. Please check out AI series part one for a full breakdown of how to implement click to move if you're not already familiar with how that works. So we'll create only one new script called the moving platform. Really quickly, I'll just flash up here the two scripts player input and the agent link mover. These full scripts are also available in the GitHub repository, link in the description below. You can clone this repository and get the end state of this tutorial with that link. We'll open up the moving platform and we'll add a serialized field private vector three array of positions. Those will be the positions that will move this platform between a private float, also serialized doc duration, set that to 2f by default. That's going to be the duration that we pause in between positions. So whenever we go from position index zero to index one, we'll pause there for two seconds in this case, and then we'll start moving to the next one. We'll add a serialized field private float move speed, set that to 0.01 by default. This can be how fast we'll move every frame. And a private list nav mesh agent, agents on platform equals new list nav mesh agent. This will be whichever agents are on our platform. We'll define in start, start coroutine, move 
platform. We're going to start a coroutine that'll just constantly be trying to move this platform. But before we do that, let's define two other functions on trigger enter first, which accepts a collider other. That's that box collider we were talking about earlier that was marked is trigger. Whenever we have our nav mesh agent enter here, we'll trigger this function. So we'll do if other dot try get component nav mesh agent passing out nav mesh agent agent. If that returns true, that means that whatever collider entered does have a nav mesh agent on it. So we're going to add that to our agents on platform with agents on platform dot add agent. And then the second function we'll define is private void on trigger exit collider other. And what we're going to do is just copy paste what we did on, on trigger enter because we want the exact same logic. But whenever the collider leaves, we want to remove that agent. So agents on platform dot remove instead of add. Now let's move on to the move platform coroutine we started on start. As soon as we start this coroutine, we're going to move this game object to the position of position zero. So we know we're aligned to where we want to go. We'll then set an int position index to be zero saying this is the first index and int last position index and we won't assign that a value yet and the last variable right here to define is wait for seconds wait equals new wait for seconds and we'll put in the doc duration so however long we specify there will be how many seconds we'll wait and because we want this coroutine to run basically forever we'll say while true last position index equals position index so now we know the last one we were at and then we'll increment the current position We'll check if the position index is greater than or equal to the positions dot length and then we'll set it to position index equals zero if that's true and all that's doing is making sure that we know we're not going outside the bounds of our position array right and that we're keeping a reference to the last position and the current position why because we're going to define a vector three platform move direction as positions indexed by the current position index minus positions indexed by the last position index and we're going to normalize that that gives us the direction between the current and the next one which we're then going to use to move this game object but before we do that we need to find out how far are we going to go so that's float distance equals vector three dot distance transform dot position and the second argument is going to be the positions indexed by the current position index and we'll also define a float distance traveled to be zero and we'll check while distance traveled is less than the distance we'll assign transform.position plus equals platform move direction remember that's the direction that we're trying to go to times the move speed and we'll also increment distance by the platform move direction dot magnitude and the magnitude just gives us the length of the vector so we're basically converting that vector three into a float that we can use to calculate how far did we move and we'll multiply that by the move speed and that gives us how far we moved on that frame all we've done so far is created a moving platform that can go through a bunch of waypoints so this is really where the magic happens is we're going to move the agents based on how the platform is moving so we're going to iterate over all the agents on the platform for int i equals zero i listen agents on platform dot count i plus plus agents on platform indexed by i, and we're gonna use dot warp and pass in agents on platform indexed by i dot transform dot position plus what we just calculated, the platform move direction times move speed. So the same amount that we moved the platform, we're gonna move the agent every frame. So we'll yield return null at the end of this. And what that does is every frame as this platform moves, we will control the agent and move the agent along with the platform. And whenever we get to the end of this, where we've traveled all the way over to the next position, we'll yield return that wait. So that way we'll wait at that position for that dock duration. And then we'll start going to the top of this loop and go on to the next platform position. Okay. So, so remember at the beginning, I was saying that this more falls into the yes with some limitations category of being supported, right? As you can see in this code we just wrote, it's not really supported because we need to manually maintain the nav mesh position outside of the scope of the navigation system normally. We have to every frame update the navigation system with the current location of the agents that are moving because the platform is also moving. If we don't do this, then the nav mesh agent ends up being like pushed to the edge of the nav mesh that is on on a moving platform as the platform moves. So we need to have some way to manually keep the agent in alignment with wherever the platform is moving to. So before you kill me about how that's not really supported, it, there is better support. And I'm going to show you the limitations with this method in just a second, and then also a better way that has some other limitations to it. So we'll open up the Unity editor again, attach the moving platform script to both of these moving platforms, and we'll set up the platform positions based on where we want them to go. So this first one is going to spawn wherever it currently is, and we'll make it go straight to the end of the other ramp. 
So that's negative three, three, nine, and negative three, three, negative 16. You might notice that there's also a surface reference on this moving platform. That's just an artifact of whenever I was first putting together this video, I was doing some weird stuff with updating the nav mesh while these were moving and it turned out not to be necessary most of the time. So our script that we just wrote, right, doesn't have the surface on it. So you don't need to worry about hooking that up and it's not gonna cause any problems with it not being there. So this other platform, we're gonna make it go out to the right a little bit, over, and then come and dock at the edge of the other ramp. That's negative six three negative six negative twelve three negative six negative twelve three negative nineteen and negative six three negative nineteen if we then click play everything should be working so as the platforms get close the nav mesh agent can cross the nav mesh link onto the platform the agent moves but if i'm clicking while i'm moving the nav mesh agent can't move anywhere that's because we're using that warp which resets the destination every frame. So it's impossible for me to go anywhere because the same frame that I click or possibly the next frame, the agent gets its destination cleared and cannot move. And a general limitation with both of these, this and the one we're about to implement in just a second, is that if you want to set the destination of an app mesh to a platform, you can't just right click on the platform and tell the agent to go there. If you do that, you'll see that the agent runs around and tries to go under the moving platform. So in your game, if you have moving platforms like this, you need some logic to check if the player is trying to set the destination or if you, using your AI manager somehow, are trying to set destination to go to a player or a position on a moving target. You need to find out where is that moving platform going to dock and have the agent go to the next docking point. Or using more complex logic, you can determine which docking point they can actually make it to by the time the platform will get there and go wait at the next docking point. So that's a pretty big drawback, right? Not being able to move on a platform. Let's open up Visual Studio again and make it so our agents can move while they're on a moving platform. Instead of agents on platform warping, let's do agents on platform index by I. I'm gonna do something controversial here. We're going to do dot destination plus equals platform move direction times move speed. So all that's doing is modifying the agent's current destination and increasing it or moving it in the same direction that the platform is moving. But Chris, you're not supposed to modify the destination without using set destination. And generally, you're right, don't do that in most cases. We're doing it in this particular case because we don't want to set a new destination. We want to slightly modify the destination every frame based on the moving platform's velocity, right? By adjusting that destination every frame, the user can still click to set that destination or you in whatever way you have to set the destination of the agent can still modify that destination while that platform is moving. This comes with some drawbacks too though, because we're relying on the nav mesh agent to move along with the platform. If your platform moves quicker than the nav mesh agent does, then you can't move on the platform because the agent's just gonna get pushed to the edge of the nav mesh and then get warped every frame as the platform moves. They'll only be able to move when the platform is docked. There's two ways you can address that. One is you can, whenever the nav mesh agent gets on the platform, do some math to figure out how to adjust the acceleration and the speed of the nav mesh agent so that way they can move on that moving platform while it's moving or you can have a really slow moving platform like i have here where it's not a problem <laughs> sorry and the second the second alternative is you can actually do that you can have a slow moving nav mesh or you can use the warping mechanism if we open up the unity editor again and just click play with exactly what we have platforms will start moving we'll wait for this one platform to come over to the agent we'll get onto that platform and then as it's moving, you can see I can right click and still move my nav mesh agent on the platform while it's moving. Awesome. And because this platform is moving very slow, you can't really tell that problem I was talking about. If I get onto a platform and then increase the speed of this platform just to show you, let's make it, make it move instead of 0 0.01, let's change it to 0 0.05, so five times faster. You'll see that the agent gets pushed back to the edge and then kind of rubber bands off to go back to the position that they were trying to get to. So that's why what I was saying earlier, you would need to also do some math to figure out what is this move speed? How does that relate to the agent's move speed? And adjust both their speed and acceleration. Because here, if I adjust their acceleration, but not their speed, they still can't get off that wall. After I've increased their speed and acceleration, you can see that they can still move on this, but there's kind of some jerkiness. So you really need to make sure you align those two values with the move speed of your platform. If you choose to keep a really fast platform with a potentially slower moving nav mesh agent. And now just for fun, what we're going to do is show you how you can also add in the ability for a player to jump from one moving platform to another moving platform. Now this one's a little bit more tricky. 
So in this one, what we're gonna do is underneath the floor nav mesh surface, so the root nav mesh surface that most of the level is on, the non-moving platforms, we're gonna add in those nav mesh links there. That's really important. And the way that we're gonna do it this way is to prevent you from having to update the nav mesh every frame. You'll notice at the very beginning of the video, the nav mesh links were attached to the ramps and not the moving platforms. And you might have thought, well, if the moving platforms are the ones that are gonna dock, why not put four nav mesh links on the moving platform that can dock anywhere? If you do it that way, you can, but you need to make sure that you update the nav mesh around those moving platforms every frame because the nav mesh links don't automatically get updated as this platform moves. So if you keep all the nav mesh links in a static position, you remove that extra need of having to bake the nav mesh every frame. But if you have really dynamic moving platforms, then it probably makes more sense to do a baking around the platform every frame. Now I'm not gonna get into how to do that in this video, but you can check out AI series part 14 where I showed you how to bake a nav mesh in a volume around a specific area. We use the player, but you can use the exact same concept around the moving platform. So what I'm gonna do really fast is make a bunch of nav mesh links that are one width wide and keep the same start and end point distance that I was using before, which is negative 0.35z and 0.35z. And I'm just gonna line up a whole bunch of them where the two moving platforms could potentially intersect. If I then click play and I wait for the platform to come by, let's just kind of speed through this. And as that second moving platform comes by, I can make my player walk across the two without any issue because those nav mesh links are there. You want to make sure you don't do one really wide nav mesh link because then as long as there's a valid point on either side, the agent will jump across that link. So that's why we did a bunch of small ones. So there you have it. That's how you can mostly make moving platforms work using the Unity navigation system with some of the drawbacks and limitations that come with those. So it's not completely not supported. This frequently asked question section, I think could be updated to say, yes, it is supported with some limitations because as you can see here, depending on your use case, if you don't need your nav mesh agent to move while they're on that platform, that's totally fine. It can work no problem. If you do need your nav mesh agent to move while they're on a moving platform, that's also okay. You can do that. There's just some limitations you need to know about in the implementation side and how to work around those. I gave you a couple options. I hope those were helpful. If you got value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. And if you're interested in more Unity NavMesh tutorials or some other tutorials in a similar format to this, check out this video over here.